In this set of videos, we'll discuss divide and conquer sorting. So first, let's just recap what the divide and conquer strategy is. There are three steps to the divide and conquer strategy. First, we want to divide the problem or split it into smaller versions of the same problem, and this usually involves partitioning the data. Then we want to recurse on the smaller subproblems. And finally, the third step is we want to combine our solutions of the smaller problems into the solution for the larger problem. We've already seen one example of the divide and conquer strategy, and that is binary search. When we have a sorted list, we actually divide the search space based on what we see at the midpoint. So just recall, so if you have a sorted array or vector, when we conduct binary search, we look at the midpoint. If the target value that we're looking for is less than the midpoint, then we recurse on the smaller portion half of the list. Otherwise, if it's greater than we would recurse on all the elements in the list that are greater than the midpoint. And if we are lucky, we would just return the midpoint if we've actually found the target value there. And we just keep on looking at the midpoint of each of the sublists. And that's how we would divide it. The recursing is on the sublist that we have to search, either the larger portion or the greater portion of the list if we haven't found it. And combining the solutions for binary search is often just returning the location at which the target value is found in the array. So that's the, the combination. So now we're going to look at sorting strategies that apply the divide and conquer strategy. And we will start off in this video with merge sort. So merge sort breaks the list we want to sort into smaller subproblems. It recurses on those smaller subproblems, and then it combines the result. So now, when we think of merge sort into in terms of the divide and conquer strategy, it's quite interesting because merge sort does nothing meaningful with the values during the divide or the recur stage. It only does something meaningful work in the merge algorithm. And what I mean by that is when we apply merge sort, we keep on cutting our original array in half until we hit a base case. And then once we hit the base cases, we start merging the sublist together. So we don't even look at any of the numbers that we're trying to sort until we hit the merge space, the combining the results. So let's just see what this looks like. So we have this array of eight integers. And all that merge sort does is it breaks these array of eight into two arrays of four. And then it breaks the two arrays of four into four arrays of two. And then it takes those arrays of two and breaks them into arrays of one or list of size one. Finally, once you just have a single element, that's the base case. You can assume that a single element is sorted, and now we have to do the work of combining. So you'll notice now, once we hit the base case, we assume that 7 and 3 are sorted, so now we have to merge those two lists. So we have to compare 3 and 7, so now we create a list which is sorted. So 3 and 7, and then 8 is sorted, 6 is sorted. Let's combine them. We combine them into the list 6, 8. 5 and 10 are sorted. We combine them into the list 5, 10. We assume 4 and 2 are sorted sublists. We combine them to the list 2, 4. And now you'll notice that once we have our four list of size 2, we start combining them into the merge step. We'll combine them into larger lists. So now we take our list of 3 and 7 and 6 and 8, and we combine them into the list where they're 3, 6, 7, 8. We take our list of 5, 10 and 2, 4, and we combine them into the list 2, 4, 5, 10. And then finally, we combine our two halves of size 4 into our sorted list of size 8. And you'll notice that all of the work, the actual comparing the values, is done in the combine step, which is the merge function that we'll spend more time discussing. So let's see what this implementation looks like. So merge sort, we're passing it a vector by reference, and then we're passing it the left and the right index of the area that we want to sort in this list. So while the left index has not passed the right index, then we actually can start the work. Otherwise, we know we've exhausted the, the list of, of merge sort. 
and that would be when when they're the same. Okay, so now we look for the midpoint, so that's when we're taking the floor of the left and the right index and dividing it by two. And then you'll notice we make two recursive calls. We call mersort on the list between the left left endpoint and the midpoint, and we also call it on the midpoint plus one to the to the right endpoint. So this steps so we're just recursing on both halves of the original list. And then finally, once we've done that, we would merge the left half of the list and the right ha half of the list. So that's why we're passing the left, the right, and the midpoint, because the left half is going from left to M, so L to M, and the right is going from M plus 1 to R, and it just merges those so that the entire list within that range is sorted after the call to merge sort. And the important work is actually done in merge. So all the divide and recursing step does for merge sort is it just keeps on cutting the list in half until it hits the case where you just have lists of, of one element. Okay. Now let's consider the real work. So this is the combined step of merge sort. And the problem is, and this was a problem that we mentioned when we started talking about uh, sorting is, it's similar to the problem when we're thinking about, if I have two sorted lists, how do I find their intersection? Here, we're taking a similar approach in that in linear time, we're given two sorted lists and we wanna merge them in linear time. So, the, so we can do this by doing a scan of both lists simultaneously by keeping an index into, say, the left-hand side list, so we're going to call that R1, and the right-hand side list, we'll call that R2. And we'll scan both lists at the same time, and you'll notice that we cannot do this in place. We actually have to make sure that we have an auxiliary, auxiliary list or vector to keep the results of this, so we cannot do this, this part in place. We need a little bit of extra storage for this. Okay, so let's see, trace through what's actually happening. So we start off with the two sublets, three, seven, and six, eight, and you'll notice those two sublets are indeed sorted. So now what we want to do is we want to combine them into a sorted list in our array index by W, which has uh, nothing in it uh, quite yet, and then we have to make sure we've exhausted both lists. So we, we have R1 pointing to the first index uh, in the left-hand side and R2 for the right-hand side. So we compare, we compare the value 3 with the value 6. Since the value 3 is smaller, we copy 3 into our merged list. We advance the index into the merge list W to 1, and we also advance the index into the left-hand side list R1. So now we are comparing a 7 and 6. 6 is smaller, so we copy 6 into our resultant list. We advance the index into the resultant list, so W is equal to 2 now. And now we advance the index in the right-hand side list. So now R2 is going to be pointing at 8. Now we compare 7 and 8. 7 is smaller, so we copy 7 to the resultant list, and we advance the R1 pointer, and you'll notice that we have exhausted the left-hand side list. And finally, when we've exhausted the left-hand side list, we still have one element for the right-hand side list, and we had advanced that pointer to be pointing to the open spot in the, in the merged list, which is W equal 3. We copy 8 into that location, and when we do that, we will advance the index into the resultant list W past the endpoint and R2 past the endpoint, and then we know we stop. So basically, we have to do a scan of both of the sorted list and put them into the resultant list, copy the, the values in the sorted order into the resultant list. Okay, let's see what this looks like as code. So we take as our input the vector, and you'll notice that we're passing the vector by reference, and I mention this be just to demonstrate that we are going to be 
making sure that after the call to merge, the input vector between the starting and the ending indices is indeed sorted. So I just want to mention that that's what's happening here. So as, as we had just seen, we cannot do this entirely in place. We have to do this with an auxiliary uh, vector, and that's our vector result. So we initialize our starting index to be S1. So that's uh, the first, the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is going between S1 and E1 minus 1. So that's the endpoint of the left half section. And then we have the right-hand section going from S2 to the index E2 minus 1. And we're doing exactly what we had just discussed. So while the index into the left-hand put side so that S1 is less than E1, and S2 is less than E2. So that's just saying while the left-hand side list and the right-hand side list still have elements, we're going to compare them. So we're going to compare the element at position S1 in the input list with the element at position 2, uh, is, sorry, position S2 in the right-hand side list. If the element at position S1 is smaller, we place that element into the result and we increment to advance the index into the left-hand side list. Otherwise, we push the element from the right-hand side list at index S2, and we increment the pointer. Now, once we break out of the loop, then either the left-hand side is exhausted or the right-hand side is exhausted. So these two loops are should be mutually exclusive. I just want to say this, mutually exclusive. And so while S1 is less than E1 is saying is while the left-hand side list still has elements, just push them into the results. Otherwise, while the right-hand side still has elements, we push them into the results. Now, finally, once we have completed that second while loop, we have results sorted. We have those two sub list, the left and the right hand side sorted, and now we want to overwrite whatever was in result with the appropriate in, in the appropriate segments of the input vector that we are passing by reference. So here we are going to just copy while i is going from zero to the result size, and we're making sure that we are not overriding the boundary of input. So that's why we have start plus i is less than e2, and we just increment i we are going to copy the result, the element at result i, to the input vector at start plus i. So all we're doing is we are overwriting the memory in the original input vector with the result. So the left and the right, we're just overwriting them with the result vector. Okay, so now we can start talking about merge sort runtime analysis. Now, the one thing that we want to think about is how are we going to deal with the recursion and how much work is being done? Now, as I mentioned, merge sort doesn't really do any work in the divide stage and the recursing. It just basically just cuts the original list in half until it hits the base case. And all of the work is done in the merge. And we can see from the merge that that was done in linear time because we have to just go through all the subarrays and the sublists and just assume they're sorted, go through linear scan combining them and then copying over the result, the temporary result in. So that's merge can be done in linear time. So you'll notice that when we look at this recursion, we can cut because n is equal to 2 to log 2 of n, and sometimes I'm, I'm a little bit sloppy about that. If I leave off the log, uh, the base of the log, I just mean log 2. Um, the number of times that we can divide our original list of size n by 2 is just log n. So you'll notice that the recursion, we're going to keep on recursing, recursing at most log n levels, but then at each level, when we're returning, we have to do the merge, and the merge is going to be the linear amount of time work. So we're going to have log n levels of recursion, each doing a linear amount of work, and there we have the n log n 
runtime analysis of MERSort. Now, this isn't formal, this is all intuitive, so now I want to give you the skills on how you can actually handle this more rigorously.